Do we, our colors are coordinated, this? kind of. Look at that. Nice. Hey, you look good today. Thank you. And every day. <laughs> Welcome to Rotor Ride. I'm the Driven. Today, I'm joined by Cappuccino. Chad Capper, Cappuccino. He's got That's his own pilot, pilot name and everything. He doesn't fly yet, but he's got a pilot name. I do fly. That's how you, I've always that's flown. how you get an FPV. First make a pilot name, first make a logo, first make an intro. <laughs> <laughs> and then you start flying. You know what, I'm glad you're, you're talking down to our audience like this. <laughs> it brings up a good point. Pro pilots are really disconnected from the newcomer. You don't remember what it's like. Yes, I do. No, you yes, don't. Yes, I went out and crashed a lot. No, none, oh, that none was of the road right. As you'll see in these episodes, we have two episodes coming. This one and then a, uh, a flying episode. So what's going to happen is I'm going to build, I'm going to become the newcomer. Mm -hmm. Because I seriously have not really experienced this hobby like I should have. I've spent a lot of time just focusing on production and the business. I barely fly at home, right. but lately I've opened back up. I've been able to actually fly. Here's the problem though. All of my gear, it's just like test equipment or you know, it's, it's stuff, prototypes that I get. I can never get used to a rig. So I've built three quads, but it's, I don't know, you can't start with a quad and just like know what settings it should be or whatever, especially mm -hmm. if you haven't been flying. So I decided I'm gonna start fresh. I'm gonna to go to our store, I'm gonna pick all of the parts completely fresh, tailored to what I want to achieve as a pilot. Bardwell and Vanover have agreed to help me buy and build a mini quad. I wanna get the Rotor Riot team to really understand and embrace uh, different ways of teaching and learning and helping people get into the hobby and up, up and going as quickly as possible. Okay, so enough chit chat, let's get into the episode. Good luck with your build. What's the intent behind your build? Well, I like to fly freestyle. So it's gonna be a freestyle build. Yes. Now the type of freestyle, I like to I like to fly gaps and proximity. I want to do more tricks, but not more not technical. I want simplicity because I don't like things that are over engineered. I was I'm really thinking like either the CL1 or okay. or Dribs build. So so we're gonna want a simple frame, we want a freestyle frame, not a racing frame. Easily replaceable easily parts. Easily replaceable parts. Easily easy to replace arms, very few parts. Mm -hmm. And let's, it's let's see what we got. Let's look at okay. the store and let's start looking at frames. How about we, five we want inch five frames? Inch. Five inch. That's what we're focusing on today. Yeah. So we've got the CL one. Is it in stock? Yes. Can we see that they're in stock mm -hmm. from here? Yes. It'll say coming soon if not. So, okay. so CL1. I like that it's cheap. Mm -hmm. We always have parts for it. Only other thing I was considering was I do like kind of a, a unibody design just because I feel yeah. I feel like unibody designs have less vibrations. I think there's not one answer there. I think Alex needs to be in this episode. Some, <laughs> some <laughs> unibodies have resonance issues. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of unibodies. S something right. about the way that the arms disconnect from the main plate uh -huh. actually breaks up the resonance. Okay and you won't get those harmonic vibrations. Um, I don't think there's a single answer there. Okay. But maintainability was a big concern for you, more yes. and durability. So a unibody, once you break an arm, or right. even I if you just the whole scuff thing. the end off the arm, you gotta rebuild, just take the whole bottom plate off. Okay. I personally prefer unibodies, mm -hmm. but... Um, Why do you prefer them? Well, I fly the Chameleon, mm -hmm. the, and on the, the, the non-unibody version of the Chameleon is the Rooster, and it's a low deck design, and when the arms go in, there's not a lot of room on the inside. I got you. So I like the unibody because it gives you more room. I to do build like with. a shorter thing, but the CL1, it's easy to customize. You just get Which eight is different standard. Shorter. So the CL1 is, a, is an option. Let's look at what else we got. Let's okay. look at our other options. So, Chameleon TI, fantastic frame, mm -hmm. but it's a unibody, and it's pretty expensive. A lot well, of people would shy away from it. Three that. times more than the CL1. Yeah, it's a great, well, so it's my the, preferred freestyle frame. So it's is the great. Ladrib Skyliner. The Skyliner you were looking at. That looks a lot better, but again, I would say I don't care if, obviously I don't care how my quads look. I just want them to fly well. Now how's the So stuff? that's the other thing, yeah. mid-throttle mid oscillations. Everybody struggles with that. Yeah. Is there anything in the frame that I can choose that'll help with that? In fact, I think mid-throttle oscillations are affected by the frame, but it's difficult because mid-throttle well, oscillations- Drew never seems to have them. Is that Drew's anything? not, he's not normal. Yes. <laughs> we don't know. He does? We he just know. flies around them? No, you see him. <laughs> he just over filters his quad. Ah. It's hard to- I want to over filter my quad. Yeah. Oh, you're going to kill Alex. <laughs> it, it's hard to predict which frames because it's the, combina it, the combination of motors, ESCs, frame, and props together. Mm -hmm. So can, can you help me find that combo? 
Yeah, well, what you do is you build a quad, and then if it happens, then well, you try to I, fix it. Okay, you're here because you're supposed to know that. It's it's you're just really, supposed to know, Joshua. So we can go we can go with settings that have Does worked Alex for other know? people. <laughs> how do you fix? It? Listen, how do you fix mid throttle? It, it, no, it, I want to minimize like the, the the best chance of not having them. Well, the, the whole chance to get get rid of them is you have to think about like where the vibrations are coming from, which is obviously from the motors. But like generally, with the most of the frames on today's market, you're gonna get vibrations from the motors pretty much no matter what because we don't soft mount the arms to the quad. The, the biggest thing is building the quad properly with like good motors and everything, and then tuning yeah. the quad properly. Okay. To get the rid thing of is, the thing is, if you build a tight quad mm -hmm. with decent motors and stuff. You shouldn't we'll get minimize throttle oscillations. You want to keep everything, and no matter what type of quad is, away from the flight controller. That's usually mm -hmm. what's going to backfeed and, and cause noise and cause vibrations and all those kinds of things. So when I'm picking a freestyle frame, I want to actually separate everything as much as possible. VTX from the RX and from the flight controller to try and keep the noise okay. away from everything else. Okay, so I want so, a no-nonsense, yeah. just flies well, yeah. not, I, it, the, the image is important to me. Yeah, the Stingy I have, I like. The Stingy's 100 bucks, so what's um, your price, I guess, what's your price range? Well, it's, that's something it's, everybody has to think about. I don't about. think it's a, a price range, I think it's value. I want, yeah. the, so the important pieces to me is I want it to, to look good, so I want to have as few vibrations as possible. I see. Um, I want to fly freestyle, I told you the style okay. of freestyle, and I want it to be cost effective, so I think anything $100 or more is, is too okay. much for this. A hundred dollars is okay. If you can sell me on it, honestly, I really, I really yeah. love high value. So when when I'm looking at thirty five dollars and it flies as good as a hundred dollar frame, then yeah. I get excited about that. Well, I definitely think we can build a CL one with quality components that'll fly well okay. and be reasonably durable. I mean, I want to um, support Drew, and I do think it looks good. Yeah. And I do like that it's a lower deck. Yeah. And it has the camera cage, but. Well, you built a CL1 already. No, that's, this not, is no, that, one? that's the quad box. Oh, that's not a CL1. No, I have, mm -hmm. I've never built so a CL1. you haven't built a CL1? Mm -hmm. Speaking of value, though, I do think the remix is the best. Like, you get the most for the money. Maybe we should make you build a remix. Well, but I want three quads, and I don't want to oh, build three remixes. Okay. Okay. So Stops. I'm going to do the CL1. Okay. I'm going to do the CL1. Okay, CL1 so we is. got our frame. Okay, uh, what next? Motors? Um, how about flight controller? Flight controller. Do you build around, that's a good point, do you build around motors or flight controller? Well, the flight controller, you can put almost any flight controller into a build. Mm -hmm. Just pick one that has the features you like. Well, The I motors like, are going to really affect. I like flight one because setup is okay. so fast. Okay. Then like, then, I know Alex likes it too. <laughs> then, that, then what do we got for flight? I mean, there are many. But choices. I don't, I don't oh, have enough fast. feel yeah. to know the, the, like, the flight quality difference between beta flight and flight one. Yeah, yeah. No, that's I a mean, great reason to choose Flight 1. The different firmwares fly differently. Yeah. But you could get a good flying quad on any of them. Okay. So actually, the ease of build and ease of use of Flight 1 I is, like is a, one of the better reasons, I think, to pick it. The one thing that I hated more than anything about building multi-rotors, because I'll go back eight years, is soldering your motor leads, checking the direction, and then mm -hmm. re-soldering mm -hmm. them. I hated it. I don't yep. know why. I just I despised yep. it. I wish that, so, yeah, they put all that stuff into Wizards and made it totally easy. Our choices, let's look at our all right, choices so for go flight, to controllers. flight controllers. I'd rather switch flight controllers than have to be swapping pins on the ESC. Right. Yeah, why I agree. I don't want to... Why don't I'm, we just wait for it to come in stock? When's it going to come in stock? No, we need, no, this is a real situation. Okay, no, okay. Try to, okay, so, so so are we going to give up on Flight 1 because it's out of maybe. stock? Maybe, let's put it on moment? a shelf for a moment. Okay. And we're going to go to full-size controllers. Maybe okay. maybe they have stuff in... Oh, we have the hype train right control. Right control. Yeah. That's an obvious choice. It's a solid and one. And we have it in stock. Now, this flight controller with the... Can I use this with your ESC? We have a cable. We right. stock a cable. That's that, what I yeah, remembered. You can do that. Okay. Add this to my cart. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I mean, I jumped at that, but I'm obviously way more familiar with Do we with have that. my ESC also? Um, well, that's the flight controller. So wait, real quick, okay. let's look. So what we else? do have the race flight. Revolt OSD 30 mm -hmm. by 30. So if we go 30 by 30, we have the race flight. Let me see. Okay, so now we need to look at ESCs. 30, yeah. Yeah. One non-Flight 1 ESC that is direct compatible with the Flight 1 OSD 30 by 30 is the Hobbywing 45 amp ESC. It has a cable included that is direct plug-in, don't need to depin anything okay. to the Revolt OSD. So it's 30 by 30 and it works really, really good. It's a great so combo that I've been running personally that would, on Flight that would 1. Let so which one? Stick with so Flight 1. Hobbywing X-Rotor Micro 45 amp, yep. 30 by 30. Bucks. Yeah. 
Okay, well, that's a good one. And the Hobby Wing does have a direct cable from the ESC yeah. that is compatible with the. Okay, so so right now, what's nice though? So now I have I really like this because mm -hmm. if I burn this out, I have two options I can replace it with. Yeah. So I do like so that. Let's let's talk, let's talk about that for a second. Uh -huh. When you're picking a flight controller and a four in one ESC, mm -hmm. it makes your life a lot simpler if they're pin compatible. What that means is that the plug from the flight controller plugs directly into the plug right. from the ESC. I don't want to swap stuff. Swap, and yeah. a lot of people don't realize that you just because they plug in doesn't mean that the pins are in the right order. Always you double can, check. You can fry something. I by, do. Yeah. So buy a flight controller and ESC that are designed to work together or that just coincidentally work together, and then when you have to replace it, you just unplug, plug in the replacement. And you know, it's interesting, we've picked a flight controller based on it being easy to, easy to set up, you don't want to solder, you just want to plug things in. As much as possible, and, I don't mind soldering a little bit. And easy to configure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would say you should pick a flight controller based on features or performance, but for, for beginner and even intermediate pilots, the features and performance of flight controllers are largely the same. They all make the quad fly. So choosing okay. based on ease of build and ease of maintenance is a perfectly valid choice. Okay. Motors. motors. Now, I've been flying drip motors and I, I think they're wonderfully powerful, but I, I actually don't... I want enough power to pull out of a dive, mm -hmm. but I don't want so much I'm constantly worrying about yeah. managing my, my throttle control. Because yeah. I don't fly fast. Yeah. I, I just want to fly well. And more powerful so, motors actually make your life more difficult because the hover position for the thro for the quad gets really much lower. low. That's what I'm saying. And it so I have to manage very hard that to whole hover. section of yeah. it. Yeah. So I, w I would rather, yeah, be a mid throttle. Yeah. Not um, too powerful. I think if you when people are starting to think about motors, I actually do recommend that you start with a price point, which is not actually how I go with a lot of things, mm -hmm. because motors are the thing on the quad you're going to replace the most. I want the blasters. Okay. Now those were my baby. <laughs> right. So I I designed now not the flight performance. Tommy did yeah. the testing on that. Yeah. But as far as what they have to offer and the, the the style and 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 just the whole concept of it was my baby. Yeah. From the beginning, so, so I have the, to choose those. So the blasters are going to be twenty eight bucks, which is a premium price for a motor. But for the first set, that's twenty eight bucks for the first set, and then you can replace them. Right. And how much does it, we changed the, it yeah. used to cost 10 bucks to replace them, you but now actually. You get them replaced for free. So you get. Well, you got to pay shipping. I'm, I'm just being honest, now, but, but we should at least consider you, you, other yeah. motors. So let's talk about, let's talk about this. Uh -huh. Price, you're going to pick your price point. An $8 motor is a super, super cheap motor. It's, mm -hmm. don't, don't get it if you can avoid it. A 12 or $13 motor is a decent budget motor that's still not going to perform like a top tier motor, but way better than an $8 motor. Mm -hmm. So that's something like the Emax Eco motor or the 3B trainer motor. A $18 or $20 motor is, mm -hmm. is going to be a starting to get like pretty good motor. And then like a $25 or $26 motor is a really premium motor where the, perform, the, price, the performance difference between like an $18 or $20 motor it's going to be a little better, but maybe not way, way better. Yeah. Well, and with the blaster, I would say the blaster, if it was just priced as a motor, yeah, probably around the same as the grinders. Yeah. Like I, I would say that that's where it's classified. But you're paying the extra for the warning, yeah. the replacement. Yeah. And the the thing is, they still they perform just like the Acros, which yeah. is a premium yeah. motor. But the the areas where we we shaved costs were like the the colored staters that yeah. that costs extra. Um, we have the uh, the bearings are a cheaper bearing, but yeah. they still hold up pretty yeah. well. The aluminum is actually the less expensive 60, aluminum, 60, but it is thicker. Yeah. So there there were trade offs. Yeah. But we feel actually they are more durable than I realized they would be. Like because we're we're getting fewer replacements than we yeah. thought we would. So that's a good thing. So I I always tell people ask yourself when you crash and destroy a motor how much are you going to feel like you can afford to replace because you're going right. to replace motors although with the blasters you won't have to deal with that mm -hmm. and then we can think about size and kv and in general for like a five inch freestyle build i would say pick either 2306 or 2207 size so okay wait wait at about i'm trying to put my head in the space of a, yeah. a newbie a yeah. beginner okay. and my head's spinning right now. okay and and it kind of is okay because seriously this is our own site i go here there's yes. just so many freaking options i know i like options if yeah. I've tested eight different motors and I keep wanting to tweak, yeah. I want tons of options. Yeah. But if I'm just, I just want to go fly, yeah. I want like four options. I'm going to make it simple for you. Okay. 
for a five inch freestyle build, mm -hmm. pick a 2306 or a 2207 size motor, mm -hmm. and shoot for about 2400 kV. Okay. That's just so that's just that's just a great all round. The grinders answer. would be a good one. Yep. Um, what's Jeff fly? He does 2450, but it's larger. Jeff Jeff is a higher so a higher. Oh, he's 2650. Yeah, a higher kV motor is going to give you more power and be a little bit more sensitive to prop selection. You get fewer prop options in a sense that are it's, optimized for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You're going to have to if you pick too aggressive of a prop mm -hmm. on a higher kV motor, it's going to kill your battery. Doesn't or maybe, that isn't that what Drew does? Doesn't he always fly an well, aggressive prop on a high kV? Uh, I don't know what prop does he fly. He's flying the fifty-one forty-six. Man, now, it's right? disrespectful to some of the props he flies. You know, it's, you know he he flies. He fly he's been flying the prop. the Johnny props from Azure, and I've been flying those but as well. But that's new. And those are four point eight props, which four point eight as far as length compared to a five. So they're under five right. inch, and on a high KV prop. Those props really shine. So he's been more responsive. That's why so he, all of a sudden not five inch props. But see, that's all of a sudden why he started. He hasn't really found a prop in the last year that he's like, oh, I'll fly whatever. But when he started flying these props like I did, we were both like, wow, yeah. this is really good because it's more optimized for higher KV. Okay. So with a lower, but, yeah, he was not flying an optimized prop. No, whole, not at all. He was flying just a one of his motor. Yeah, yeah ridiculous I would, I would, prop. I would say this. A pro pilot and an experienced builder is mm -hmm. going to be able to get good results out of a combination that a beginner or intermediate wouldn't. Okay. And 2400 kV, you can put literally any 5 inch prop on that and it will fly okay. I like that. I like options there because yeah. sometimes, like I have a drawer full of about 18 different sets of props. It lets you uh, experiment with different props. The mm -hmm. quad is not going to suddenly start flying bad. Okay. On any five-inch prop, so, and I think I think I would steer you towards 2300, uh, 2306 size. Okay. A twenty three oh six size motor is going to be a little bit more linear in its throttle response. Than, the, than a twenty two oh seven. A twenty two oh seven is going to be a little bit sharp, more poppy at the top end and but less I predictable. I kind of like that. Uh, th that I do like. So when yeah. I set up my throttle, I yeah. like the, because I want more resolution here yeah. and then when I have to I can just punch out of stuff. So the 2207 and it's a very subtle effect that mm -hmm. many people might not even notice but the 2207 is going to have a little less resolution and torque at the low end mm -hmm. but then as you push Wait. the throttle up it's going to it's going to go. It's more resolution. The right? 2306 is going to have a little bit more linearity and resolution right. at the bottom end. Oh, I see what you're saying. But less sort of just raw all out at the top yeah, end. Yeah, I would I would like 2 thirds of it to be uh, and then the last third beats. Mm. You, want, you want the 2207. Did you get that? Yeah. So 2207, 2400-ish kV is what we're shooting for. Okay. We should acknowledge that when we're talking about motor kV, we're assuming that Chad's going to run a four-cell a four cell battery. The kV and the battery voltage are related. Mm -hmm. If you were shooting for a higher voltage, like 6S, mm -hmm. we would be going lower kV. Okay. So this, this recommendation to go 2400 kV assumes you're using four-cell, which most... That's what I recommend for, for beginners and intermediate pilots. Okay, so we, we got to settle in on a motor. Uh, obviously, the first one that comes up is yeah, the, the, the blaster, blaster and then the really Acro, close. which these are identical. I mean, almost identical as far as performance. You said you care a lot about the image quality of the video. Yes. And normally, I would not steer like a beginner or intermediate uh, builder to easy O bearings, but if you care a lot about those mid-throttle oscillations I and do. smooth video, that's a good point. you're going to want those easy O bearings. All right. So I any motor can be smooth out of the factory, although not all of them are. Right. But the EZO bearing motors are going to stay smoother longer so when you, you're crashing them. What are you hearing about the Acros? I mean, 2207, 2450 kV, mm -hmm. EZO bearings, solid build. I do Let's like the at, orange stators. What else we got? Hold on, I'm going to put four of these in my okay. car. All right, okay, so, so we, our motor. we got our frame, flight controller, ESC, and motor. Yeah, camera, VTX. Yes. Okay, camera. Antenna. I do love the Rotor Riot Run Cam Swift 2, but I suppose I could run it since it accepts a full-size camera. The CL1 does. Um, micro cameras are where most people are going today. Yeah. A micro camera with a with a well, full-size this is lens. A, but this is a CCD with a really nice lens. You like the CCD though, huh? I do. You don't want the CMOS. I, I'm fine with the CMOS. Although, we have had some complaints about our case cracking. Okay, so let me just ask you, what would you recommend without my input? I like the look of a CMOS camera. A CMOS camera has better dynamic range. So that's, well, that's true. It's, yes, a very, right. it's a very personal thing, though. Mm -hmm. If you want the CCD camera, the Rotoriot one is one of the best. That's a fact. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not opposed to... You can talk. <laughs> Micro Sparrow 2, <laughs> please. All right, so, so good. So let's go look at it. The CMOS camera. There it is. Micro Sparrow 2. 
Micro Sparrow 2 is, is a great CMOS camera. It has a very, if you like CCD cameras, mm -hmm. but you are kind of being forced into it's, buying a CMOS camera. It's 4.3, that's, a, that's yeah. an important thing to consider. I would prefer to fly 4.3. I like having yeah. plenty of up and down. Yeah. Where's my quad, the um, Skadoosh? What camera do I have on there? So this is the JB Micro Eagle? Yeah, but I like that camera. So I have your yeah. camera. Yeah. On my and I like that. Should I just stick with it? Yeah, stick with it. So That's, this one's I like, one. What I and I I trust your opinion, but we're out of here, stock on it. The micro. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I must have got the last one literally. Yeah. yeah. The JB Micro Eagle. Uh, obviously, I like it because I tuned it. Uh, it has great dynamic range and great low light sensitivity. It does have a little bit of noise in the image that some people really object to. As long as I can but, see it. Forty six. So it's similar price. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little bit expensive. But um, it's, I mean, it's only a couple bucks, and it yeah. is switchable, and I do like it, and I already have it, so I'm going to go, go with this go one. With okay, the VTX, um, I like the Tramp. Because um, you got the wand. Because I have the wand. Yeah. However, I just installed a Mach 2 the other day. How different is the Mach 3? Mach 3 takes 6S voltage and goes up to 1 watt output power. Okay, that's not as important to me. What don't I you, like? Let's let's ask this. What don't you like about the Tramp, if anything? If I were to critique the Tramp, two th two problems I have is it's one, it's it's bigger than a lot of flight control. Or I'm sorry, VTXs. We got a lot of room in here, though. Yeah, but I still like to keep it okay. light, or you know, just if, yeah. if 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 I don't have to use space. But you're right. Yeah, we could we could fit it. Um, the other thing is I like seeing what channel I'm on. Does and I display. I like the Mach 2 has the channel yeah. right and power band channel power right on the display. Yeah. So I think the question is how much do you care about keeping the ability to use the wand? Because the the, the Mach 2 or the Mach 3 supports smart audio, but you can't you have to do it in the goggles. I I know it sounds silly, but I I like just being able to push the button and look at it. You like the button? Yes. Okay, so we're going to move away from the Tramp for that reason. Well, in size. Yeah. So we could get the Mach 3. The Mach 3 is a fine choice. Yeah. Again, obviously I'm going to favor products that we make or sell. Nobody be surprised about that. 25 Oh, bucks. so this is what I just bought, and I really liked it. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, but they there's a bundle that the we combo. sell that is the the... Uh, receiver mm -hmm. and the VTX mm -hmm. and a 3D printed thing. Great. And it's 37 bucks. Great. So, yeah, and a little 3D printed. And this one's the Mach 3. The one I bought was the Mach 2. Just, so I can get the. Look at this. So the Tramp yeah. is 30 bucks. Yep. Yeah. And it's out of stock. The Mach 3 with the receiver yeah. is $37 plus the little housing yeah. thing. The receiver that comes with it is the RXSR. You're using FreeSky receivers. That's what you, your transmitter mm -hmm. is. And the RXSR Wait, this is has a great XM one. Plus. Should I do the RXSR? Well, the, the RXSR is going to give you telemetry. The XM Plus is not. That's yeah, the big I want difference. telemetry. And you got to pick the color. What's the best color? I want black. Full oh, green. we need an antenna. Yep, we need a video antenna, mm -hmm. and we need oh, props. Can I buy extra antennas for the uh, receiver? You can. You okay. Sure can. So, what antenna am I getting? For antenna, I think durability is uh, as important as performance, maybe more, depending on how much you're going to push your range. So let's take a look at our choices. What about the little ones? The stubby antenna uh, is more durable, but it's going to give you worse range because it's not as it's closer into the frame. Mm -hmm. I would steer away from a stubby antenna on this right. guy. It doesn't have anywhere to mount a stubby antenna. If we look at a frame... Wait, can I get a 3D part? Probably. I probably need that anyhow, right? If we look at a frame like this, the Skadoosh frame, right. it's got a little hole here for mounting an antenna. The, the connector will come through and the antenna will just screw right on. Right. That's a great application for a stubby antenna. And you can see how that would be more durable because it's not sticking way out there and getting mm -hmm. whacked, knocked around, but also worse coverage. You want to try and get a 3D printed Wait, what's mount? the connector? The connector is MMCX on the Mach 3. Okay. So it comes with a SMA pigtail mm -hmm. where you, so you can plug an MMCX antenna directly into it or you can get I an like SMA as few antenna. joints as possible. So you're going to then be getting probably an, an MMCX antenna like the But like that's this. got a 90. Yeah, like the Pagoda. Do we want the 90? Uh, like this, right? I think you're probably going to want that coming straight out the back. Yeah. Yeah, especially because the VTX is going to be mounted on the stack. Mm -hmm. So if the VTX is going to be mounted in the back of the quad as it often Wait, is. Wait, we're going to fit it on top of there? Well, that's that's what that 3D printed thing you got. But I guess how, you can put how, it back. How am I going to see the channel? It's a good question. Cut a hole in the top. That that 3D printed thing you got is designed to go on top of the stack. But well, on my skadoosh, I put it behind it. 
I don't know if you're going to have enough room on the back of the CL1. The back of the CL1 tapers down. Mm -hmm. That's a 36 millimeter sized because it's designed to be the same size as the flight controller. But you can mm -hmm. see a 36 millimeter sized thing is not going to go back here. There's not enough room back here on the back. Okay. Should I do the tramp? Uh, you can still use the Mach 3, but maybe not with the 3D printed thing. Just We'll just stick it back here. Okay. If the Mach 3 was going to go in the back here, I probably would go for a 90 degree antenna because uh -huh. I would mount the Mach 3 sideways and then have it stick out the back. Okay. The straight one. If you, oh, I see. If so you're we need put the 90? I think I would go with the 90 if it's going to be mounted in the back. Okay. Yeah. So probably you can get a Lumineer. For seventeen ninety nine. Yeah. There we go. So this is the one I want. Seventeen ninety nine. Okay. And it's got a ninety. Okay. All and right. then we're gonna try to find a three D printed mount for that. For this one, let's see if we can find the right mount because there's gonna be a mount that just holds this. Okay, so, so we'll add to add cart. Add that to the cart. Try searching. Wait, should it might we might recommend stuff, right? It would be great if we did that. <laughs> no. <laughs> of course Search not. Search for <laughs> Axie. Axie mount, because there's a mount specifically for the Axie. There. That's it. Perfect. Oh, that's the that's one it. for the CL1. That's exactly what we want. Seven bucks. Perfect. Love Perfect. it. All right, so that's Great. what we're getting, right? Yeah. All right. Oh, I'm nervous. About to hit the buy button. Um, last, last is props. Wait, I need antenna tubes. See, it recommended them. Oh, good point. I like Black. clear. Not like clear, because I want to see, see the antenna. Mm -hmm. All right. I what, think we have everything but props. What kind of props? Um, I good, like durable. So when we're thinking about props, generally we want to think about size and pitch. Mm -hmm. We know we're going with 5-inch props. That's right. what, that's a good all-around choice, and that's what we're targeting with our frame. Pitch is the angle of the prop. Props with a higher pitch are going to make more thrust, but also kill your battery more. I do that's the gist like... Of it more flight time so we'll, we'll be more leaning efficient. towards lower pitch props okay and that'll also help with that throttle management thing you were talking about earlier mm -hmm. in the video okay they're going to be less powerful but they'll be easier to manage hq is makes excellent props they're a little bit pricey for some people mm -hmm. i do like I that i'm not worried about price on props because it's so minor i mean it, the, the price differences are so little yeah, okay. You know what I really it does, like? It does add up. I will say, for the people out there, it does add up if you're crashing a lot. For durability, I love bi blades. I do. Why would you say that? We're not putting bi blades. We're not they putting bi blades on a no. quad. No. <laughs> bi blades. No. Actually, I, I think the bi blades do still have a purpose in FPV for like racing in very, very specific scenarios yeah, where you need to go. Round. But not for freestyle. Uh, uh, definitely not for freestyle. Oh, Chad, that's Wait, just well, you disrespectful. Explain why. One one sentence. Why? So this is kind of like the whole argument. With they, Red Red actually did a really good episode about this mm -hmm. a few years ago. I feel like that's just a better episode to link to discuss this. But essentially, tri-blade props generally... I feel like I'm going to sound really dumb with my response. Maybe I should just say, go watch that video. Um, by blades. But hold on, wait. This is this is what I want to cover in this video, like right there. So here's what happens to everybody. I want I want by blade props. I'm a newbie. We've got two industry pros here. They're like, oh my gosh, that's stupid. <laughs> because but, try, but then I ask you, I put you, I call you on the carpet, and you're like, oh, I'm going to sound stupid explaining it. No, I, like, I'll tell you what. I'll, here's, you why, see... here's why. Here's why. blade props are more durable. You're right that they're mm -hmm. more durable. The f they they they're easier to balance because mm -hmm. it's easier to balance two things across a pivot than three things. Right. right? The downside of blades is that they make less thrust, and the cornering handling is worse. Uh, tri blades will carve in a corner more. So when you say precisely. less thrust less efficient? No, they're actually more efficient, all else being equal. But it will also make more thrust, even though it's less efficient. So it's more thrust per rotation, but so you're using more energy. The pilot who would want to use a bi-blade prop is a long-range pilot who needs maximum efficiency. Mm -hmm. And so you're giving up some handling. Yeah, and top okay. speed pilots because the bi-blades can achieve a higher RPM because they have less drag. Okay. But for an average pilot, a tri-blade will give much better handling with a with better thrust and adequate responsiveness. Okay. And you might ask, then, why not go to four blades? Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, you do get even better handling with four blades, but they're way less durable. Yeah, every blade you add, you're adding less durability. And they're way less responsive and have less top-end power. But what about the, the new Azure bi-blades? Well, I've never flown those, but I would steer away from bi blades. So, <laughs> Alex, wait, would you agree with his? No, I would agree. And, and the way I actually was going to describe the um, the tri blade prop versus the bi blade is just on my experience. When I tried a tri blade prop for the first time, I found that I was getting a lip, not much more thrust, but just a little bit more thrust. But I found that the quad 
flew way smoother on tri-blades. There's nothing wrong with running bi-blades. I was just giving Chad crap because <laughs> I know he knows better than to say bi-blades. So bi-blades are kind of a throwback. So when you say, hey, I want to put bi-blades on, it's just like, okay, Chad, and we know you like old stuff. <laughs> That's like, why we you were, do it. That's you do we it. Making, that's you do it. Your you. footage is going to be right. so smooth. No, so, but it's smooth. Actually, the one thing you said that perked me up is the smoothness. You're saying that tri blades are more are more smooth. So okay. going with tri blade props, HQ is a great choice. Yeah. Oh, I the, like these smoke colored ones. One of the things I love oh, about HQ is that they're available in a bunch of pitches. So they have a okay. a 4.0 pitch, a 4.3 pitch, a 4.5 pitch. Should I go all the way to 4.0? Um, 4.0 is probably not enough prop for that motor. Okay. I would recommend 4 .3? like a 4.3. Okay. Yeah. I like HQ. Yeah, 5x4.3 is a great choice. I like I'll give HQ because I like don't, Zong. Don't get the black ones. Clear right. black or smoked black is okay, but the actual plain really? black props are made of a different kind of plastic and they're less durable. I did not know that. Yeah. Then what about clear? Fine. Colored props, up. don't get the plain black ones. Okay, okay so we have I a think, oh, battery. Check. Oh, batteries. Yeah. So we decided that we're going for four cell batteries. Mm -hmm. four, four cell voltage, that's a good starting point. Honestly, can't, I, just the way I'm going to fly pretty much any battery, I just want a cheap battery. Yeah, right, so the Race Aquad's line batteries are good performance at good price. You just have to ask yourself what size battery. So 13 or 1500 maybe? 13 or 1500 milliamp hour is a great yeah. starting point for a 5 inch free cell quad. 3 pack so, for $51? So that's the CNHL, that's also a really really good budget yeah. battery. Okay, I'm gonna go, because we have China Hobby Line in stock, yeah. and that's a 3 pack. Yeah. Okay, so any little accessories like 3D printed parts, how am I gonna mount we my go GoPro? We need a GoPro mount. Alright. I'll be okay with a battery strap. A universal, I have... Yeah. No, not that just one. Just get, just get this. this that's this, wait. That's forty. I want thirty degrees probably. I think, th I think that because the TPU is flexible, I'm really sure that'll work. And we can check that when we go down there and see if it'll fit. We should really have a GoPro mount for our own freaking product. Yes, absolutely. It's and only, only available in pink. You have to just, just get it. Just get it. You'll be fine. <laughs> it's just check that. But if I do blue, it'll match. It's only available in pink. It's only available in pink. Everything else is out of stock. It would bother me so bad. It's bothering It's got me. a color match. I think as you're as rushing puts, through this. I think you're taking me for granted. I'm rushing? And, yeah. Because how Should am I, I going to We've been here for like two hours. How am I going <laughs> to... But no, this is a good thing. Before you hit the buy button, uh -huh. um, look at your shopping cart. Oh, 18 items? Go get a cup of coffee. Think. And like, like just work, you know, look at one of your other builds. And think about the stuff you've left out. What if you don't have any other builds, Jack? Or what if this is your first? Then go, you checked. can go to hell. No one should do a first build. <laughs> when I'm doing a build, the minute I need something that I don't have, like, oh, I need some double-sided sticky tape, I put it on a list. Mm -hmm. and I, or I'll just go to Amazon and buy it. Because I have Amazon Prime, so I don't worry about shipping. Eventually, then, you have all those things after you've done, like, three builds. So if it's your first build, there will be something you need that you didn't think to order. That's going to happen. Just just make a note of it and order it, and then eventually you'll get there. What about mounting? This is, okay, I need to bring this up now because it's the one thing that just irritates the crap out of me is placement of the stack. Because, yeah, I know they come with the gummies and all that, and you do put need, a screw through it. Do we need it, M3 standoffs? almost every time, what happens is you, you put it in, yeah. and what's going to happen? The ESC is going to touch the carbon fiber. Yeah, so what right? we can do is we can get an M3 assortment. So what we want is M3 nylon standoffs. M3 okay. is the screw size, mm -hmm. and nylon oh. is the material and standoffs. So, so get this one? Well, that's steel bolts. Oh, that's heavy. Well, and... It's probably stainless steel. Those are fine. That's good. I would buy that. Those, you should have for that. For 10 bucks. You should have that in your house. I agree. Then you're going to want... You're that gonna comes with... Some... Holy crap, look at all that. Yeah, I know. 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, I 18, know. 20. It's what you just said earlier. Yeah. I think then I'm look for an M3 nylon assortment. Nylon. Ooh. Yeah. So Ooh. there's... That I actually for... want that. You want that too. So those are... I didn't even for... know we sold this. Yeah. We sell that, but not the GoPro mount for the CL1. You Who's know what else? Running, who's running this company? Drew. <laughs> wow. Way to throw Drew under the bus, Chad. <laughs> you know what I saw was the rubber standoffs. Did you see that? Yeah, that those. So now that flight controllers all come with these little rubber gummies mm -hmm. to mount on, Wait, where did it go? the rubber standoffs are, aren't necessary anymore, I think. 
Oh, really? Yeah, so here, look look right here. These little blue things here mm -hmm. are silicon gummies, they call them. Right. And they provide vibration isolation for the flight controller, and in this case, apparently, also the ESC. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't need the rubber standoffs that you were looking at before. The, Would it hurt? Yeah, actually, sometimes having too really? much vibration isolation causes problems. Okay. And I've actually, I've talked to people who are using gummies and standoffs, and they get these weird oscillations. Okay. If you think about it, you want it to be damped enough that it, cleans up the vibrations, but not so loose that, that it flops around. Flopping. So, um, place the order and go pick it up? Yeah. Right. Yep. See, this is the part that I hate the most. We don't have enough thread, enough needs thread to be there. Like that. Yeah, That's what needs we got to gotta back up. See these? Every build has some unique combination of soft mount. Of no, of of stacking. Oh right. Like every build, I do. So on this particular build, I opted just to use what was included, which was the little hobby wing spacer that also holds the ESC in. Mm -hmm. Typically, when I'm building my quads, I usually take one of these gummies, I cut them in half and then I use that as space in between the ESC and the flight controller. However, the gummies on the Hobby Wing ESC, they don't really hold the ESC down, mm -hmm. whereas the gummies on the actual Flight 1 ESC do a great, this isn't a good example because I still have a plastic standoff in there. But my point is, any way to separate the flight controller from the ESC that keeps just enough separation but holds them both in place is what you need. I spend more time trying to figure out how to stack the stack Mm -hmm. than the rest of the build. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this through and then I'm going to check it against the size of a standoff. Okay. So then we're going to put an M3 nut here and that should give us enough. That's then... really close, but it's not going to touch. And then do we just, Alex, do you just set the flight controller right on top or do you have another you, you spacer? You have to put a spacer in between. Is there another spacer? So we'll, use well another. cause even if it's not touching, the ESC has a lot of stuff going on. Exactly. Yeah. And would it be bad to have something to hold this ESC down? So I would, if we we'll put another nut. So that's why I like having these assortments. Also, it's, you want to mount your flight controller so your USB is facing down like this. Really? That has to I've do been told that it makes it fly better, and I've personally you, seen it fly better. Here's why. Right. Here's why. This is the processor yep. that makes the whole thing go. When it is... The go-go processor? When it's next to the ESC, it gets more electrical interference. When oh. it's right side up, then it's shielded a little bit by the circuit board, and it protects it from the noise. It's not the it's not the USB that matters. It's the it's this chip here. Okay, I'm gonna break into this video. It is now about two weeks later, and I've had the time to get into it and really tweak some things. So rather than showing you how we initially built it, I'd rather show you how you should build it. So I'm going to break this down and talk about each component and why I have it the way that I do. The first thing we're gonna start with here is the battery placement and the power lead. So I have the power lead coming out of the front. Uh, so the battery lead can stretch over the top and connect. The reason I do that is because the back gets awfully congested. Some people like it to come out directly on the side, which I often get concerned about the props. It depends on the frame, but sometimes the props get really dangerously close to it. And I definitely don't like it coming out the back because that's where all your antennas are coming out and it just gets too congested. I do use two battery straps. Uh, the reason is, is because battery straps will break at some point and it's good to have an extra one on there. Um, and then, uh, of course, I love using the Umagrip. And you know what? I do have this. If you don't have Umagrip or you can't get it for some reason, this is weather stripping. It's not as pretty, but it does work. And, you know, if you, you could just use maybe a couple strips on your top plate, put it down like that. So two strips of weather seal. Like I said, it doesn't look as nice, but it does work great. Before I take it all apart, I wanted to show you how I have the GoPro mount on here. It's a Race Day Quads uh, 30 degree GoPro 6 uh, slash 7 GoPro mount. And I did two things. One, I have a um, double stick tape just to keep it from sliding forward or back. And then two heavy duty zip ties. It's these bigger, 
thicker kind of zip ties. I'm just gonna cut these off so you can see. I did do one thing, it's maybe kind of interesting. You see this? I took my soldering iron and I I made like little grooves this way because oftentimes even with the double stick tape on a hard enough crash it can slide forward or back with just the zip ties and the stick tape so by adding those grooves this way it gives it a little more grip so it doesn't move back or forth now i want to talk about the camera placement initially this camera comes with this little cage here you see these mounting holes right here without the cage you just mount here and we connected this front hole to that hole. And the problem was you could see the front standoffs because the camera lens was actually slightly behind those front standoffs. So what we did was added the cage to the camera even though it's not necessary. And I added another hole in the camera mount. So the camera mount that comes with the CL1, this blue 3D printed camera mount, comes with this hole up here. I put another hole with the, I just use a soldering iron. You just heat your soldering iron up, poke a little hole in it, and you got a new hole. Now I should probably have a washer on there, but it's held pretty well. Um, the other thing that I did was I took a little bit of Umma grip and put it underneath the camera just to keep it from shaking around, just so it has something down there. And to change the angle, it's just friction fit, you know, and you can just move it how you want. I, I got it fairly tight. The placement of the ESC and the flight controller. This special little formula of spacers and gummies is always tricky. In that kit of standoffs, it gave us uh, these little nylon nuts that were just the right spacing. So I was able to put one at the bottom, use the regular gummy that comes with the ESC, put one in between, and the gummy for the Flight 1 flight controller. You'll notice I don't have anything on top. We just run this without any because it, it fits tight enough that it's not going to go anywhere. And it has not loosened or come up or off or anything. Most all-in-one ESCs are going to come with a um, capacitor. This one isn't as big as some, but um, I was able to fit it in between the camera and the stack. Okay, so this is a little tricky to show here. This is the radio receiver, um, and you can see I have it zip tied to one of the other camera mounts. So the CL1 comes with a shorter and a longer camera mount, and I used the shorter one as a holder for the radio receiver. And you can see it just mounts to the standoff, and then I heat shrinked it and zip tied it to that and then the antennas just come out of that and they go back to the 3d mount and that's how we have the radio receiver placed also in there we have the mach 3 the video transmitter you can see it's right there just have double stick padded tape down here we have the 90 degree antenna and you can see the axis. it just loops around there and goes up into the 3d mount so everybody went off because you guys had a shoot to do and i was just going to finish the the setup mm -hmm. i plugged it in it didn't recognize the flight controller did you have the right drivers installed i don't know <laughs> but at that point i was so frustrated because i'm just i'm trying to put myself in the, in so the mindset of a, of a newcomer you get and i'm like all this physical stuff yeah and then you got to plug it in and, and it wasn't and you recognized. Have to do some computer program so i grabbed another usb cable uh -huh. still didn't work until I grabbed the third USB cable. Oh really, it was just the cable? Yes. It wasn't even a driver thing. A lot of people don't know this, but some USB cables are strictly for charging and don't pass information oh. properly. Be aware of that because something like that, it just demotivates you. Yeah. You're like, you put all this work in and you just, you don't know why it's not, not working. That's something I think is important, but you know, one of the things I want to do is I want Rotor Riot to be able to accommodate all of these little tiny little things and help people through the process. We got to hover it in the warehouse and actually got to watch all of you guys fly it, which is really impressive in a tight location. All I would do is hover it in there. I'm not gonna you just gotta fly it around. So now that it's all done uh, and we hovered it, we know it works, I would consider that a big success. It's a good looking quad, Chad. It really is. Thank you, Josh. Actually, it's, it, I'm serious. It's good looking. I think it is a good looking quad. You were better. Wait, why are what the are you? motors warm? They shouldn't be warm from that. Oh, they're pretty warm. It's pretty, pretty under-filtered setup.
but you'll have to fly it with a GoPro outside and everything and just see how the motors feel after that. My motors get pretty er, pretty warm after your test hour, but my, my quads are pretty under filter as well. It's just one of those things you need to take into account. If you're gonna run flight one, there's all these different uh, like default uh, pins that you can pick, and some of them are from custom pilot setups, and some of them are really under filtered. So make sure you fly them, and keep in mind too, like if you bend a prop or something in a crash, those under filtered settings may not be the best for you. So you just play around with all the defaults, and if you have questions about the filtering, go check out the flight one Facebook group. People are more than happy to answer the questions. That was a great ad, right? <laughs> so, uh, so more the intent of this episode was to walk through this is like undercover boss but i wasn't undercover um wait but i, I wanted to you're chad Kepper. wait you're <laughs> chad yeah at the end of undercover boss uh -huh. the boss talks about what he learned and also gives a college scholarship to one of his employees usually. okay great but more importantly, what did you learn about the experience of being a customer? I think the biggest thing, and I anticipated this going into it, and I thought this was, is it was going to be all the tiny little things, like yeah. the spacing. I think that one thing that this episode and kind of picking out all the components taught me was that, you know, as an experienced pilot, it's really easy to know what you need to put on a quad, but for someone who's begin who's getting into it, like, mm -hmm. like you said, knowing all the spacers, I think maybe we should put sort of some whole completion pack or some type of guide to some of these builds or maybe have like a checklist of stuff in there because I mean I'll be quite honest I still forget stuff when I'm putting quads together and having like a checklist of stuff to know to get would be really really nice and for someone who's building their first quad as a beginner you know nothing's worse than ordering all the stuff and then getting halfway into your build and like oh no I need these screws and not having them so I think we need to just be ultra ultra sure that we cover everything in the store any learning materials we just need to be more comprehensive overall thank you guys for checking out this build with cappuccino. Let us know what you struggle with. What what are some of the most difficult things about building one of these drones? If you've been doing this for a while, what did you struggle with when you were figuring this out? And if you are just building for the first time and you're stuck, what, what are you stuck on? We wanna help you. We wanna make it easier for people to get into this and get over all of the little problems that feel like insurmountable mountains. But promise, every little build issue is one that can be solved and figured out and everyone should be able to get in the air and enjoy the best part of this, which is actually flying. That's what you're gonna do next time, so stay tuned to the next episode of Cappuccino's adventure into <laughs> FPV. And we're gonna get him flying, going around some gates, we're gonna get him some coaching from Jeff. It's gonna be a great time, so we'll see you there.